Hey kids, it's Dresser James, and this Dresser James explains we're looking at Lambiosaurus. As I said before, my birthday's around this time, and my wife was like, let's get them PNSO figures. Um, I still love Popo, Safari, uh, Carnegie, all the companies, but PNSO to me is like the best of the best because there are more models than, than toys at this point. So, Lambiosaurus, uh, first, what I'll point out is history. It was, it's a hadrosaurus from North America, particularly uh, Dinosaur Park Formation in Canada. There are species, or there are some that are thought to be found from North America, yeah, the United States and Mexico, but the ones that are in Canada are the ones that are more established, more taken, taken serious, basically. But I will say this, they are a hard toy to find. Uh, I only have two before this one, and I'm going to go over them in a minute. But I will say it, also the importance of Lambiosaurus is that it's found in the Campanian period. So remember, Campanian stage, the, the Cretaceous, so the Mesozoic, the Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, Within the Cretaceous, there's the early and the late. Within the late Cretaceous, there's subdivisions. There's the very last bit. It's Mastrichian, that's T-Rex, Triceratops. Before, that's Campanian. That's where this guy's from. And so is Cretosaurus from my previous uh, video. So the idea is that now from park formation, um, now I'll go over what animals and toys would be found in this environment too. But in general, Ambiosaurus, again, is one of those underappreciated, uh, un I mean, it, they're, they're just not in pop culture as much as Parasaurolophus or even Cretosaurus. Uh, named, named after Lawrence Lamb, the first specimen uh, this recognized scientifically was 1902, but unfortunately it was named Trachodont. Now, Trachodont is a name you won't see in books anymore because initially it was a type of, they were supposed to be like essentially a Montosaurus forms, but there were some Ceratopsian material in there and other things too, so Trachodont has been broken apart and dubious. And what we consider Trachodont the actual thing that's more established is now in Montosaurus, but Lambosaurus had its name after Lawrence Lamb died in like 1919, I believe. Uh, my first Lambiosaurus figure is right here, and I this is from Collect A, 19, 2009. And again, Collect A is a company I love because they do they do really um, not obscure figures, but they do figures that are not just TX and Triceratops. I mean, all the companies are, are guilty of this, and I understand why the market's there, kids, you know. But they just make every year it's a TX, a Triceratops, a Stegosaurus, a Brachiosaurus, I'm mean, a Raptor. All companies just do that, but Collect A does will do other species. So that's why I always look for them first. My complaint is that they always do small, well, until recently, they do smaller examples. Um, they only do bigger ones of Fuji sauropods or ones that they know are very popular. But again, this one here is my first Lambiosaurus. It was a, a bit of a, a hunt to find it. Um, just like all Hadrosaurus, it has three feet, three toes on its feet. Um, the forelimbs have, oh, okay. So it has the, the Hadrosaurus four, so no, no thumb or first toe. It walks on a three pinky there. Again, they're, I mean, out of the front, Part, these three toes are in like a midden of, of, of skin. It doesn't quite show that as much, but it's still pretty good. Um, so, very nice figure. Like I said, if you can't afford to find this one, this is not, this is like the, you know, this is my market example, right? Um, the next one I have is one where I can't even remember. Uh, when I go, I search everywhere for models, all stores and things. And essentially, these guys, um, I believe it was, like a, it was like a doll store in a mall or something like that, where it's hard, kind of a cheaper plastic figure. But it was a Lambiosaurus, so I was like, get get that. It's my second one. I only have two, right? Uh, so um, overall, it has three toes. The hands have, I, I can't even tell, I think three fingers, not the pinky. Uh, but again, it does have that crest. So um, I often refer to Lambiosaurus jokingly as a midden head because it looks like, like you put the midden on, a little piece of it out. It reminds me of that. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, so those guys are, for the most part, the only models we have so far. I don't have a name for this company, but, but again, it's like a dollar store general find. Uh, but of course we get to the PNSO model and it's Audrey Lambiosaurus and like I said before I, I thought the names to me seem I don't want to say silly but I was like why would you have to do that but who knows it's their marketing their company um, but let's go ahead and open this the, the official scissors of Jurassic James let's see um, who knew that the, the, uh, I purchased from the Renaissance Festival would pay off so well let's And again, the box, I keep my PNSO boxes because they just, they're like, they're art too. I mean, they're such beautiful art here. Now, let's go ahead and pull the guy, Audrey, I guess it's a girl, <laughs> out. Um, oh, wow. So, it comes with a poster of Audrey. So, there's a poster of the animal that you can appreciate. Like, when, I guess you're traveling, you can't take her with you. Um, and, of course, they always give you little booklets with the stories of... It's, oh, this is really cool. 
So, like, they'll give you an example of, like, when it's walking, what its feet. I'm going to put that right there in the camera. So, you can pause it and you look at it more. But, um, you can in the forelimb. So, they kind of break down all the parts of the animal, the head, the crest. So, I, I really like that's this, the kind of the tension of each. Like, if I had my own toy company, I would do that, right? When I have my own toy company, right? This is what it's building toward. So, let's go ahead and get this model out. Uh, Interesting. The Cryptosaurus did not have a separate plastic wrap around it, but so there it is, or let's show there she is. I will keep that in the package because you never know what the future holds. And like I said, I always keep my PNSO boxes because they're just such, they're just so neat to me personally. Right, so let's look at this pretty lady. So, um, just gorgeous on every. I mean, my goodness, this is amazing. So, uh, I'm sorry, it's. I'm sorry, this is, they're just such beautiful models. So, one thing to point out too is that the, you, you can see the tall neural spines right there. So, um, it's often been conjectured that they may have had like a hump, like a like a bison. But often, but most paleontologists, I, I think they see there's like a it's like a ridge, and then the, the ribs come out here. So you can kind of see that in design. The tail's just great. I mean, again, nothing's perfect, but this is pretty darn close. Uh, the forelimbs, I like. Again, very skinny legs and and, and four arms. Um, it's your three fingered toe on the pad, and then the pinky, uh, the foot. I'll, I'll notice how they're hadrosaurs. They um, they're an actually like they're mid walk, mid turn, mid whatever. Um, the foot is always one foot kind of up. The, the snout, the, 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 again, this is why Bacher hates saying um, duck bill because this is not a duck's quote bill. It's a different kind of beak structure. So the hadrosaurs are going to have very different diets. The, the, the snout is like a, like a needle nose looking thing. So that tells you, again, a very different diet um, than another species of hadrosaur, for example. And of course, the crest here is that, that you know, this is what I, I like about the most is this really unique design. Um, and again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are in the Lambiosaurus family that they're saying maybe other species and they're maybe, they thought, they thought were other species and now they're considered Lambiosaurus. So there's a lot of that going on. And I want to point out on this note that um, early paleontologists, people go like, wow, they feel wrong. Uh, this is a new group of life. Like they're, they're looking in the earth, they're finding these fossils, these crushed up fossils. And they're finding a new type of life form and they're trying to figure out you know what they are first of all and then the gender and then the, the age group and range so now we now fit in like the 2000s and look back and go, well, why can't they figure that out well they were looking at new stuff it was unusual you know so for them to find a few crests and skeletons and then tell the different species for this reason i'm still not talking about martian cope in the bone wars i'm talking about just general other paleontologists that if they're finding different slightly different crests, they think it's a different species, it's a different rock unit, you know. So now we're realizing, oh wait, a lot of those were just landiosaurs, <laughs> different varieties of them, different looks of them, you know. But um, I must say again, I, I just really love this model. If you, like, I love every uh, one of my cre creatures here my, on my island, but like, I, I think the PNSO is my, my future. I like these guys a lot. And even they even make the cloaca, look at that. The word cloaca means sewer in, in I think, Latin for Rome. Um, and where humans have, like, a, a, a back hole and then a front hole, <laughs> they have just one. Um, and so that's the, that, you know, we have little ear notches here. Um, very cool. Now, the pattern of skin, we don't, we don't know that. But I will tell you, as far as uh, ecology goes, who does this Lambrosaurus live with? Well, it's in dinosaur park formation, just like Cretosaurus, his cousin. But the difference is... Uh, Slightly different animals, so we have Parasaurolophus, which we all know and love. We have the Edmontonia and Yaupalocephalus, so those are from the same part of the formation. And of course, Chasmosaurus. There's Centrosaurus, which is a toy out there I'm going to get one day. And of course, Ceracosaurus, which is, I think, the second or at least third most famous Ceratopsian. Um, and the predator of choice or predator of obligation. As a Tyrannosaur named Gorgosaurus. Now, most of my Gorgosaurus are kind of small. But this is the one from uh, Walking with Dinosaurs, not the BBC version, the um, British broadcasting version. This, this is the, uh, the the movie where they're walking around talking. And, well, not him, the herbivores from talk, which I thought was weird because why would the 
carnivores being smarter not have language, but the herbivores being dumber would have language. <laughs> anyway, so Gorgosaurus, not to scale to everyone else here, but if a small transfer relative might, that is always unfortunate. Uh, my my uh, analogy is that Tyrannosaurus Rex is a grizzly bear, and the Gorgosaurus is like a black bear. Um, you know, that kind of a comparison there. So these guys are all in the same environment, same ecology. Now, that being said, I will now show you its closest relatives, well, close relatives, um, one of which is already here. So, pair, so again, within the ornithopod, the group, uh, this grouping, ornithopod meaning bird foot, we have like one or not. We have one or not itself, right? Within hadrosaur, we have two branches. We have the lambiosaurine, who are named after this group, lambiosaurus, um, and they have a hollow crest. And what was it a hollow crest? So another relative of it, of it would be the crestosaurus, which is we saw last time. And the next video or unopened. Um, all around, all around Titan. So these guys are essentially, this, it's, it's cousins basically, right? So again, um, like I said, it depends on what you want to do with the collector, but I would suggest if you are looking for a model, if you're just looking for one, um, I have a friend who uh, uh, works at Indianapolis Children's Museum, George, and he only does like, I would say he's a, he's a very elitist collector. <laughs> he only wants a certain scale, a certain amount, you know, like that, where I'm more open to the people, you know, more, more opportunity. Um, this is, if you only have one model you buy, I would suggest it would be these guys. Again, model, not so much toy. Um, if I wouldn't give this to a 10 year old to play outside in the backyard. Um, but if you want a model on your shelf, on your display, on your teaching diorama, this is a really good example of what to do to have. I just love it a lot. It's really cool. Um, that being said, we are now done with this video and I uh, hope you, uh, in the below here, comment, like, subscribe, share, etc. Um, let people know if this is interesting. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you want to buy a Lambiosaurus, are you happy that they finally have a Lambiosaurus you can buy other than the ones that to find and fight for? Uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys later.